Kia ora everybody, Chris Fahey here. Welcome to the Winyard Quarter Mini Series. In this vlog, I'll be diving into all of the horizontal infrastructure that went into development prior to the vertical buildings going up. Now, I'll be honest, there's a whole heap of stuff going on here, so I've just cherry-picked the stuff that I'm interested in. But with that said, let's get into it. In order to understand the infrastructure for Winyard Quarter, you also need to understand its history. Winyard Quarter started off as reclaimed land, that is, they used landfill to create land where there was previously sea. It has a history of industrial uses, the most noxious of which was the storage of petrochemicals, which started in the 1950s and gave it the nickname the Tank Farm. Before the area was regenerated into its current mixed use scheme, there was a massive decontamination project to remove soil contaminated by petrochemicals. I've heard anecdotal comments from people that they could smell petrol when digging into the ground and regardless of whether that's actually true, the decontamination aspect went on to trigger a massive scrap in court between the Mobile Oil Company and Auckland Council's development arm Panuku. In brief, this related to whether the lease provisions around keeping things clean and tidy meant that Mobile also had to decontaminate the land. That case ultimately went to the Supreme Court. Alongside the decontamination, one of the big challenges links to the origin of the land. Being reclaimed land, the area is flat, reasonably close to sea level, and obviously super close to the waterfront. This meant the engineers working on the regeneration had to deal with complexities around ensuring buildings could actually be built, dealing with the knowledge that climate change might increase sea levels, and working out how to manage stormwater in a location where you don't have a lot of height to run steep pipes to get rid of water. The scheme they ultimately came up with involves a huge stormwater pipe running down Doldy Street, alongside a number of rain gardens which double up as nice greenery around the neighbourhoods. I understand there's also a tunnel style void under Doldy Street which allows easy access to utilities in case any issues arise in the future. The urban design has been taken really seriously in Winyard Quarter and this shows with how some of the engineering has been worked into the streetscape. For example, below the Ami Doldy Park is a massive stormwater retention tank and the Instagram worthy silo is actually a stormwater pumping station that's been designed to look like the nearby silos. The other big infrastructure issue was how to get people conveniently to the area from downtown. As part of the infrastructure works, there was a design competition for the Winyard Crossing, which is now known as the Te Aweroa Bridge. The earliest designs for this called for a larger bridge capable of carrying buses and trams, but the GFC and risk of cost overruns meant they ultimately adopted a pedestrian and cyclist design, although they did future-proof the foundations for a more substantial bridge. Finally, alongside those big technical challenges, they also invested in enhancing the roadway beyond what you'd see in a traditional subdivision. More recently, you can see these areas being used to showcase some of the Māori history and mana whenua design elements, including the recent pump station mural, which celebrates nature's interwoven relationships, and the lights above Te Ramarama Way, which celebrate the constellations specific to Māori astronomy. So having dived into this, my takeout is that as you walk around today and see the shiny new buildings and top quality public spaces, you're seeing the results of years of planning and some serious technical problem solving. It's super impressive when you consider that its prior history was a reasonably noxious environment. You also get to see the benefit of the meticulous design and investment in the infrastructure. I'm sure it would have been easier and cheaper to throw down some generic roads and be done with it, but this more caring approach to design has added a huge amount of amenity to the area. Alright team, so that covers off the horizontal infrastructure for Winyard Quarter. So in the upcoming vlogs I'll be staying to jump into the vertical development, so the apartment buildings, the office buildings and all of that cool stuff. So with that said, like and subscribe and we'll see you next time. See you, bye.